Hi guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a pair of beginner silver earrings. I'm going to show you how to do some soldering, some texturing of metal, some filing and some finishing touches. Stick around till the end because I'm going to show you how you can actually win the pair of earrings that I'm going to make in this tutorial. The very first thing that I made was actually a pair of silver textured earrings. The reason why this is such a great thing to make as a beginner is because you learn some really good basic skills in jewelry making that you can then build on. All right, now it's time to think of designs. When you start making jewelry, it's always good to start with a design that has straight lines in it. Obviously, as you get more experienced, you can cut much more complex ideas, but the saw takes a little bit of getting used to, so I would highly recommend sticking to designs that have straight lines only. For this pair of earrings, I am going to use this piece of 0.5mm thick silver sheet. It comes, when you buy silver, it comes with a blue film over it on both sides. This is just to protect it and it's actually quite handy when it comes to drawing your designs. Because what you can do is scribe gently into the plastic and you don't actually have to damage the metal at all. If yours doesn't have it on, some places don't, then that's totally fine. You can scribe directly onto the metal, but try not to scribe too hard because obviously you're going to need to get rid of those lines afterwards. But we'll talk about those in a moment. Okay, so I am going to think of a design that I can use for this piece of metal that includes straight lines. So I was thinking maybe if I do, if I cut it off about here, so it's probably around two mil or so, I'll measure that out later. What I could do with that little piece is potentially cut it diagonally. Diagonally. Diagonally like that. Or I could, and this way I would have two triangular pieces, or I could cut it like that, either down the middle for symmetrical earrings, or a little bit to the one side for asymmetrical pair, or I could obviously cut other things off it, for example like that, and then cut it like that, and discard these two corners, and then end up with these two shapes, for example. Obviously the, op the options are endless, but for today's class, I think I'm just going to keep it simple and I'm going to go with this triangular pair like this. Right, so what I'm going to need is a ruler and a scribe. A scribe is basically just a pointy metal thing that you can scratch onto the metal with. Right, so I'm going to draw this onto here. So I'm going to measure out two centimeters, so 20 mil. When we talk in jewelry, we usually talk in millimeters and every millimeter counts. Um, I'm just gonna use the right angle of this and just scribe straight across there. And now what I'm gonna do is draw diagonally. Diagonally. Diagonally across from point to point. Like that. So I'm gonna cut directly on that line, but then I'm going to file it. If you don't manage to cut perfectly on your line, don't worry, you can file it later, it's not a big deal. What I would suggest you do is actually do this in copper first as a little tester sample, just to practice the skills and make sure that you're happy with your design. I would usually do that if I was running a class, um, but for today, I'm just gonna go straight into the silver and show you how those look. All right, the next tool you're gonna need is a saw frame and some teeny tiny little blades. So a word on blades. If you have a look at them, you'll see that they got teeny tiny little teeth. And the way I like to think of it is kind of like a Christmas tree. So when you place this into your saw frame, you need to make sure that the teeth are facing down and forwards. So let me show you how. So what I'm gonna do is always place my saw frame onto either the edge of your table or wherever you're cutting or into my bench peg in this case and I'll just open this on the top here and loosen that up and place the blade into that and tighten that nice and tight. I have not tightened it into the bottom one yet. So if I run my finger down, nothing, that feels fine, that doesn't catch me, but if I put my finger up, it hooks and I can't actually go anywhere. So now you need to make sure that the end of your blade comes to the middle point of the screw in the 
in the bottom part here. The reason for that is we're going to push against that and tighten it. So we push nice and hard into that. So using your chest and tighten that while you're pushing into it so that when you loosen it, it makes a guitar string kind of noise. Then you know it's nice and tight. If it's not tight enough, your blade is likely to break. So make sure that you get a nice amount of tension in there. Great, that's all set up. Alrighty, time to saw this. So remember, once again, always cut outside the line when you can spare the metal and on the line if the two pieces need to be symmetrical. So, and you're dividing the two pieces in half. All right, so when you start sawing, your fingers need to always be behind the blade. So never ever have your finger on the line, for example, like this, and you're sawing towards. I know it looks tiny, but damn, that girl's got a bite. So make sure that you have your fingers between the blade like that and supporting your metal from either side. So then what you need to do is go down slowly. Also important to remember is that it's not about strength. If you're pushing really hard, then the blade is also likely to snap. So we want to just do a nice straight line. So start off with your blade at an angle, and then we're going to straighten that blade up like that as we go. The reason for this it gives you a much nicer clean cut that's the same all along the length of the metal. So for example, like this. So I'm cutting just outside the line, pulling down gently just to start. The first little bit's often a bit hard, it hooks a little bit. Once you've got a bite, it should take, okay? Nice long strokes. Okay, voila. So I've got a little bit excess there, which I will file off afterwards. Okay, don't stress if it's not completely straight. It's all good. That's what the file's for. Okay, so if you do want to texture your metal, say you have some extra tools, I'm going to show you how you would do that. Obviously, if you don't have the tools, then um, texturing is a little bit more limited. But if you have a hammer, if you invest in a hammer, then I can show you how to make a really cool texture with that. So what I'm going to need to do is remove the blue film, for starters. Otherwise, the glue kind of smashes all over it. And what we're going to do is hammer that with a ball peen hammer. So the ball peen hammer has a rounded side on the one side, you get different sizes. So what I'm gonna do is hammer this all over, mind your fingers, but hammer this all over. All right, so what that does is it gives you kind of nice subtle sparkle. So it's not like over the top. So it just adds a bit of facets to the metal. So it gives it a nice shine. Great, so I think that looks good. So always remember to do this before you scribe your design into it, if you are going to texture it, okay? If you have decided to texture your metal, then it is a good idea to scribe whatever else needs cutting on the back of your metal. So I'm gonna do that here and I'm gonna draw my line diagonally you naughty naughty, you teasing me, you naughty naughty. <laughs> From point to point. So like that. Ah. And now I can see that line. So you don't need to draw it too deep, but just enough so you can see. And I'm going to saw that in half. When you are going to saw, and say it's on a point, then you need to make sure that you just take your time, pull the blade down slowly, don't push into the metal and cut. Pieces. What we need to do next is to file those down. Also, if you've hammered, it's going to have a little bit more of an irregular organic um, edge, especially if you've hit to the metal quite hard. 
So you can either choose to leave that on if you want to, or you can file that nice and straight. So I've got a range of files. So big files, which are obviously a lot coarser and they take off a lot more of the metal. And then small little needle files. So the needle files obviously come in lots of different shapes and sizes, depending on what you need. And they usually come in a pack. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is use the big one to take off the bulk of the metal that I don't want. So I'm gonna hold it in my hand. Always make sure that that hand's nice and steady and file that off. When you're filing, you want your, your uh, direction of your file to go up and diagonally across your metal. So if this is held straight like that towards you, then you need to go diagonally across like that. If I try and go like that, it does work, but it often swims around quite a lot. And I just find this gives a nice straight finish. Also the tips of these will want to catch a lot. So what I'm gonna do is actually just file those off a tiny little bit now to start off with. So they don't hook. They're also a bit too sharp for wearing them, you know. So. Let's just take those down a little bit. Want to treat yourself you can also buy a ring clamp which is super handy for holding things while you're sanding them or filing them so the way that it works a little wedge in there and it's got a flat side and a round side so what you can do is clamp your piece of metal between that and put the wedge in the bottom and give it a good bang warn all your warn anyone if needs be bang and then you can Press that against your bench peg or table just to have a secure hand and then file again, like I said, diagonally across the metal. Definitely does make it a lot easier. Remember, remove any super sharp bits off the corners. Go carefully if you're using your big file because it takes off quite a lot actually. We'll clean those up later. So once you're done with that, you're going to feel that there's a sharpness to all of the edges. That is totally natural and that is from the file moving the metal out of place. So what you need to do now is to run a bit of sandpaper over that. If you have a texture, it is extra important not to let that sandpaper rub accidentally over the texture of your metal because that will obviously interfere with that. So. I have got a piece of 600 grit sandpaper here, which is all we need to give us a nice smooth edge and to get rid of that bit of excess metal. So what I do is I fold it like that and I wrap it around my finger and then I rub across the top surface and then gently at an angle along the edge of the metal on either side just to remove that excess sharpness. Once it feels smooth to your touch, then you know you've done a good job. Great, now that that's done, what we need to do is play with the positioning of them and see which way we want to wear them. So as I've decided to cut diagonally across the shape and it has the texture, I'm gonna go with an asymmetrical look, which is gonna be something like that. So I'm gonna put a pin on the back there and a pin on the back there on those two top points. Alright, so now we're ready to solder. So what I'm gonna do is make a bit of a paste with my flux over here with my borax cone. And we just need to apply a bit of that where we want to put the pin. So this one is going here. All right, once you've got your flux on your earring, you need to actually add a little bit extra of that to your pin as well. I've got some pre-made pins here, and I'm gonna grab it with my with my reverse tweezers, which are pretty handy little things. And I'm just gonna put a bit of that flux onto the bottom of the pin. Basically, the flux's job is to protect the metal from oxidization. If there's oxidization, basically blackening in the metal, then the solder won't take. Right, in this little container here, I have got a bunch of teeny tiny little pieces of solder. So I'm just gonna grab a tiny little one. You really need the smallest piece possible for the job. 
because that means less cleaning up afterwards and it does the job just as good. So I'm putting a tiny little piece on the side there and what I'm going to do now is to heat this up. So I'm going to just pick up that little piece of solder on the bottom of my pin that, and then move over to where I want to solder. What you need to do next is to quench that in some cold water and then put that in the pickle. All right, so let's do the same thing for the other one. What I was wondering is if you guys would be interested in a beginner kit. So I was thinking of creating a selection of tools that are great to get you started. So for example, the file, the saw, the soldering kit and some silver. So basically you can follow along with the tutorials that I do here and if you're interested then you'll be able to buy that kit on my website. So let me know down below in the comments if you think that would be useful. Alrighty, those should be just about done so let's have a little check and go fishing. So that looks good. Give it a little rinse off. And then you can dry those off. If there's a little bit of a residue on it, some of it will just wipe off with your fingers, but most of that will come off with a bit of steel wool afterwards, so no problem there. Alright, so what we have here is a piece of extra fine quadruple zero steel wool, which I'm going to use to clean these up. As there's a texture here, I don't want to rub any um, sandpaper over that because obviously it's going to take our texture off. So just give it a nice little rub over both surfaces. I'm holding the pin quite delicately, 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 delicately between my fingers, making sure that it doesn't bend while I'm doing this. So you give it a nice little rub over, all over, and you'll see the nice silver shine come to life. So do that on both sides, front and back. Nice, even texture over so it kind of gives it like a nice kind of satiny finish which personally I think is one of my favorite finishes but if you don't have a texture on your metal and you want to polish it up what I would recommend is that you first start with a with a 600 grit sandpaper if there's no marks on it so if you've got some if you've got some scratches or anything on it then i would suggest starting with a 400 and giving it a once over with that and then work your way up to 600 and then 800 but if there's no scratches on it then i would start with a higher grit for example even an 800 and just give it a gentle little once over if you want a high polish then what you can do is go all the way up to 1000 um, and that will give you a nice bit higher polish. But for these ones which are textured, a brush of the steel wool does the trick beautifully. What you need to do is just give them a little wash with some hot water and soap just to make sure that they're clean and hygienic. And then grab yourself some butterflies to put on the back and they're ready to wear. All right, well, there you have it, a pair of beautiful handmade textured silver earrings that can actually become yours. All you need to do to enter is to subscribe to my YouTube channel and comment down below. Also, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on any other video ideas you would like me to make in the future and your opinion on my kit idea. So till next time, see you in the next video. Have a great week. All right, for today's class, I have got this piece of blue silver, blue silver. <laughs> a, on an idea I have. Right. To realize, between the, between the,